Okay, so now having defined the uh, probability density function, we can now start looking at more sophisticated manipulations that involve it. So specifically, a very important concept for this course is the idea of the expected value um, of a random variable or of a function of a random variable. So in general, if you have a function of a random variable, g of x, the expected value of that function can be evaluated as um, the product of the, of the function and the probability distrib distribution function of the random variable integrated over the domain over which that random variable is defined. So in the most general case it would be from negative to plus infinity. Now two special cases of the expected value of a random function is where the random function is just the random variable itself, um, in which case that expected value is the mean of the random variable, uh, which we will denote as mu. And the other case is where it's the expected value of the square of the difference of any instance of the random variable and its mean. And this is often referred to as the second moment about the mean. Um, what this gives you is the expected value of that uh, mean square difference and very commonly that is referred to as the variance of the random variable. Okay, so I mentioned uh, parameters that characterize a uh, random variable and its distribution. Um, the, a, a very common one is the mean, which is just the expected value of that distribution. And what the mean actually gives you, if you go back and look at its definition, is the centroid, or the first uh, moment of area, of the, the, the distribution function. So effectively, you can think of it as a balancing point, such that the moments of the area on either side of that balancing point um, are equal. Another measure of the central location of a distribution would be the median, uh, which is simply the, the value of the random variable associated with a 50% exceedance probability. And finally, then there's the mode, which is the most observed value, which is to say it's the location of the peak of the distribution function. So these three give you a measure of where the central part of the uh, distribution function is. Uh, one then also has parameters that describes the extent to which the distribution is dispersed away from that central location. So to what extent is it spread out along the x-axis. So the most common uh, measures of dispersion is the standard deviation for which the square is just the variance. Um, there are others, such as the coefficient of variation, which describes the standard deviation in a normalized sense relative to uh, the magnitude of the mean. And uh, what is often just more convenient mathematically is the idea of the precision, which is at the inv inverse of the variance. Okay, so uh, in the reliability theory that we're going to explore, we will most often use four distribution types, and those are the uniform, the normal, the log normal, and the gumbel or extreme value type 1 distributions. Other distributions do appear in reliability analysis, uh, but for the purposes of this series of lectures, these will be su sufficient. Most of this material should be fairly familiar with to you, and so it is only really intended as a quick review or a bit of reference material. Okay, so in the continuous uniform distribution, our random variable is defined um, over a finite window of values, so a lower, starting from a lower bound, ending at an upper bound. Um, these two values um, characterize the distribution, so this is the lower bound and the upper bound. For, for any value of the random variable between those two um, bounding values, the likelihood is equal. Um, given these constraints, then the, the, the probability distribution function um, follows simply f uh, from the requirement that the total area underneath it should be 1. Um, similarly, the, the, the cumulative distribution function is just then just a running integral un underneath this constant value, and so it is a linear function between A and B, um, giving the probability at a given value of x. 
now using the definition of the expected value one can then show that the uh, mean of a uniformly distributed random variable um, follows as this and similarly one can show that the variance um, follows as that so the next distribution is probably the most uh, important distribution in all of statistics which is the and it is the normal distribution um, now there are various ways of arriving at the equations for the normal distribution I'm going to simply give them to you um, with, with the added note that in general a random variable which follows a normal distribution reflects some additive or averaging process there are no limits on the values that the r random variable can take um, and the probability distribution function is described through this symmetrical bell function which is described by this functional form now unfortunately this square exponential has no analytical integral so which is to say that this integral does not exist in fact uh, the utility of that integral is so widespread in mathematics that uh, people have defined an, a function in terms of that integral even though it cannot be an evaluated analytically and that function is what is referred to as the error function where its name specifically refers to its statistical roots so if one wanted to evaluate the probability of a normally distributed random variable in principle one would have to um, numerically integrate uh, this function or, or use pre-existing numerical uh, evaluations of the error function now a very important special case of the normal distribution function is the standard normal distribution function in which case the mean is set to be zero and the standard deviation or and therefore the variance is set to be one which is to say one centralizes the a random variable around zero by subtracting the mean and then one divides by the standard deviation uh, to, to form a new random variable z uh, for which the the, the standard the, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one okay so substituting this into our equation for the normal distribution uh, we get the standard normal probability density function and the standard normal cumulative density function okay so the next distribution to consider is the log normal distribution um, which results from geometrically averaged processes which is to say roots of products um, and it is often used to enforce the fact that a random variable cannot take values that are smaller than zero which is the case for physical values like material constants or in some cases for loads now what the uh, log normal distribution actually is is a normal distribution for the logarithm of some uh, random variable now so, you, so if you have some random variable x and you take its logarithm that is log or lin of x um, then lin of x is normally distributed with a mean lambda and a variance uh, psi squared if this is the case then um, the variable itself x um, is log normally distributed uh, with a mean and a variance now given this information then one can write the normal distribution for um, lin of x as is shown over here and then we use transformation of variables uh, to go from the distribution function of lin of x to the distribution function of x uh, which effectively involves taking the derivative of what is inside there um, and multiplying it by the, the distribution function for x and then uh, and then by characterizing the moments of this distribution one can then end up showing um, that there's a relation between this set of parameters and this set of parameters uh, which is given by these two equations Okay, so the final distribution that we need to consider here 
uh, is the Gumbel distribution, which is sometimes also called the type 1 extreme value distribution. The important thing to keep in mind here, and I will elaborate on this a little bit more um, in, the f in the coming slides, is that the Gumbel distribution is an extreme value distribution, uh, which is to say that it is in reference to a parent process for which we are looking at the distribution of the largest values that one expects in some reference time period. So the description of a random variable in terms of a extreme value distribution is only meaningful in the context of some reference time period, as you will um, see in the following slides. Uh, for now, let me just give you the equations for the Gumbel distribution. This is the probability density function and its cumulative density function. And you'll see here that you have this double exponential, right? where again we have a relation between other parameters of um, central and uh, dispersive tendencies and the actual mean and variance defined in the normal sense as uh, moments of the distribution function. Okay, so let's talk about extreme value distributions in a bit more detail and specifically let's, I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, the Gumbel distribution here. Uh, so the Gumbel distribution follows for any parent distribution uh, that has an exponential tail. So that would include the normal distribution and the exponential distribution. Um, so let's suppose that we have some process characterized by a random variable which is normally distributed. And that random variable we will call Y. That is our parent distribution. And now we seek the corresponding uh, distribution of annual maxima that follow from that parent distribution. Now for this to be meaningful, we have to have a specific number of realizations of Y occurring in a year or in a day. And then we are able to say of those values, what is the single value that had the largest magnitude? So let's suppose that we have um, our parent distribution and we have a process which produces 50 instances of Y every day, which is to say in a year we are producing 50 times 365 instances of Y. What I did here was to, to model such a process um, through random sampling. Um, so, so what is effectively shown here is 50 values every day for 365 days and each one of those values is sampled from some normal distribution. And then I pick the single value which has the highest magnitude in that year, and there it is. Okay, so now I repeat that same process 50,000 times. Now this is a numerical experiment, I can repeat this however many times I want as long as it remains practical on a computer. Obviously for a real process you will not be able to access 50,000 repetitions. Nonetheless, uh, looking at the first 10 of these 50,000, uh, you get the following. So this interval over here is identical to what is shown over there. And there is the maximum value that was observed over there. So every one of the red dots here show the maximum value that was observed during that particular year. And I should point out that even if another high value was observed in a particular year, if it was not the value that was highest in that year, it is not counted. So as an example, this year over here recorded that as its maximum value, even though in the following year, for example, that value over there occurred, which clearly is higher than that. So this is not counted as a maximum. It is only the single highest value in every given year that is counted. Okay, so now we repeat this process so we, for 50,000 times, so which is to say we generate 50,000 times 50 times 365 random values. We divide it up into 50,000 intervals and for each interval we pick the largest value. Okay, so if we now make a histogram of our parent distribution, so of all those 50,000 times 50 times 365 values, we get um, the, the histogram over here, 
And if we make a corresponding histogram of the maxima that we pick from our 50,000 annual intervals, uh, we get this histogram over here. You can see there's a, it is clearly quite far above the uh, histogram for our parent distribution. Okay, so uh, if you know the distribution of the parent, it turns out you can analytically calculate uh, the parameters for the Gumbel distribution corresponding to a given return period. So in this case, we're looking at um, annual maxima, that is to say, the distribution of, of the maximum in 50 times 365 values. Now, in the case of the parent being normal, which is the example I'm showing here, the parameters of the Gumbel distribution would be given by these equations here. So what you need is uh, the number of values that you uh, for which you're finding the maximum, and you also need the parameters of the normal parent. So you need its mean and its standard deviation. If you know that, you can calculate that distribution. However, remember, I, uh, um, I calculated this, per, this, this histogram over here using 50,000 instances of 50 times 365 values. And, and that is the reason why my red curve here, which is calculated using these parameters down here, corresponds so closely to the histogram. So in reality, the Gumbel distribution that you characterize from a sample um, will asymptotically tend towards the, the distribution that is characterized uh, via these equations, but it will never actually match it, simply because you will never have enough data to, to make up uh, a good fit between the two. So in that sense, um, extreme value distributions are asymptotic in the sense that your sample will never fully characterize the, um, the distribution with the same quality that I've been able to reproduce here. Another thing to point out is that if you change the interval within which you are looking for the maximum, the Gumbel distribution will change. So what I was doing in the previous example was I was looking at the maximum value in every given year and I ended up with this red peak. If I repeated the experiment and I looked for uh, the maximum in a 50-year period, then this is the distribution that will result. The neat thing though is that if you know this distribution, you can very easily derive this distribution by a process of scaling that involves changing this um, variable. 